Hey guys! For today's Calm Cosplay video, I'm sharing some new tips for how to easily embroider finicky cosplay fabrics. We all love our unusual fabrics, but how can you machine embroider something like pleather or velvet that often can't be hooped? Velvet in particular is notoriously difficult to work with and the bane of cosplayers everywhere despite how great it looks and how often it shows up in designs. The last time I machine embroidered velvet was several years ago, and I remember I had a really difficult time of it. These fabrics can be easily damaged with pressure, denting the pleather, or crushing the pile of the velvet, but there's some easy tricks we can use to avoid this. Before we really get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. We're still a really new channel, so subscribing and sharing our videos with your friends really does help us out a lot. So as an example of what to avoid, let's hoop a piece of polyester velvet. To get the tension nice and taut, we need to pull the fabric and pinch it between the upper and lower portions of the hoop. The tension is great, but after unhooping, you can see the slight discoloration where the hoop crushed the pile. This is what we don't want. One way to prevent this is to avoid hooping altogether, by bonding your fabric to a piece of stick and peel stabilizer, hooping just that stabilizer, and then allowing the edges of your fabric to remain free. This is an option, but you're relying solely on the stickiness of that stabilizer, which isn't always a guarantee. Instead, we've been experimenting with a fun new tool, our new Viking metal hoop. Instead of an inner and an outer hoop that clamp together, this hoop is a single piece of flat metal. It comes with several ultra-strong magnets that you can arrange around the hoop in order to hold your fabric in place. These are really strong and covered in a plastic grip so they're easier to remove, but you could use any old magnet instead. The hoop came with a set of four, but we purchased an additional four because we thought it would improve the fabric tension on this size of hoop, and I'm really glad we did. The more magnets you have, the more tension is distributed. To use this hoop, you first need to stabilize your fabric. If you're using a stretchy or a fine fabric, make sure you bond your stabilizer to the fabric in order to better distribute the tension, as it might warp or stretch with just the magnets holding it in place. For our first test, we didn't bond the velvet to the stabilizer, and I kind of regret it. As you can see here, the fabric warped and pulled as we embroidered it, and it was just too dense to hold up on its own without a piece of supporting stabilizer. To avoid ironing this delicate velvet, you can use a peel and stick stabilizer, or an even better alternative would be a spray adhesive. This temporarily bonds your fabric to a tearaway stabilizer without needing to worry about gumming up the needle. Make sure your stabilizer is nice and flat, and then carefully press your fabric into place. Place your first magnets onto the hoop. Smooth it out from that initial point, and then continue pressing in your stabilizer, making sure there are no wrinkles in your fabric. Continue to distribute the magnets evenly around the hoop. And once all of the magnets are placed, don't be afraid to remove and tighten up the fabric. Just like with regular hooping, we really want our fabric as taut as possible for the best embroidery results. Sagging fabric can result in warping or an uneven design, so take as much time as you need and rearrange as much as you want. We like to test the hooping by tapping on the center of the fabric. If it bounces back like a drum, it's ready to slide into the machine and embroider. For this piece, we're creating a faux embossed velvet look by choosing a matching thread color and allowing the stitches to sink down into the lush velvet pile. In addition, you want to avoid extremely dense stitches unless you're adding additional stabilizer or embroidering on a sturdier fabric. Here we used a latticework fill and also loosened the top tension slightly. If you're looking to create a more typical, raised embroidery look for your velvet, we recommend adding a top stabilizer as well, in addition to your bottom stabilizer. This topper can be water-soluble for polyester velvets or heat-soluble for silk. This extra layer will prevent the stitches from sinking down into the nap, and it will also provide yet another layer of stability if you're looking to use a particularly dense design. I love how the faux embossed look turned out. This is actually not a metallic thread, but it's created an amazing shine and contrast against the red velvet. There's some great detail here, with absolutely no pulling or warping. To free your design, remove each of the magnets from the hoop. We found that the heavy magnets did press slightly into the velvet, leaving a small mark. However, this was only temporarily, and was easily buffed out by rubbing at the nap. That being said, always perform a test before hooping your own fabric. This was a really fun project, and I love how my final embroidery turned out. I absolutely plan on incorporating this hoop and technique into a few of my upcoming cosplays, and I hope you guys have learned a little bit for your own projects. We'll see you next time.